not selfishly talk enough mankind. And this Wilberforce graduate's demeanor inspired me to join the blue and white. Just want you to know that, Brother Demetrius. Brother Zata Sigma, let us welcome Mr. Sigma, Brother Demetrius Newton. <laughs> Thank, thank you, brother. Thank you for the recognition. Um, I was made in this fraternity just one week before my 17th birthday. I went to Wilberforce as a, a 16 year old, and I was a sophomore when I was made. March 8, 1947, 3.30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never been an actor since then, so it kind of grieved me that this is the first time in more than 30 years I haven't paid my dues in <laughs> December. I kept waiting on somebody to call me to tell me what the budget was for this year. Uh, I, I always pay mine, and my because my son may be a little slow with his wallet, so I always <laughs> pay his in the meantime. Uh, because like me, I don't want him to ever be inactive. Let me say first of all, I want to commend our president uh, for his action as it relates to the affair that used our name. I talked to him on the phone and gave him my best advice and he followed up. You know, I served two terms as national legal counsel. So I'm aware of what can happen when someone uses your name and you don't cover yourself. And what the president did was make certain that we covered ourselves. And consequently, we don't anticipate having any problems. And we need to do that every time something like this happens that we know about. Uh, the Shoes for Children was my brainchild here at this chapel. And it's always with great joy when I see that it, it continues. Uh, I bought 14 pair of shoes for our last Shoes for Children. From time to time they can find me when they need something. Uh, the, the chapter at Miles wanted to honor B.T. King, who was very active in our chapter. And they were making those presentations just two, three years back at Miles on Homecoming. <coughs> and I wasn't going to let my fraternity be embarrassed when they chose to honor one of our brothers. So I gave them $500. And uh, so that they could be recognized. Those of you who go to Miles from time to time, we have a monument that we can be very proud of. My brainchild and Brother Henderson's work. And the same thing as at Carver High School. I always like to think that I'm a visionary when it comes to things we ought to do. And at every board meeting where we have several former national presidents, I always like to brag on number 24. Only in terms of something that happens to us all too often. I served two terms as national president, and we were never, never, never sued. That's a record. Nobody sued or got a judgment against us in the two terms that I served. 
I think primarily because I had been National Legal Counsel, and I made sure that we were covered. One morning, I got a call late at night, around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, from a brother in Texas. One of our brothers had assaulted him. Knocked this guy's teeth out, and he was a trumpet player. So those of you like Henderson, who's a musician, know how detrimental that is and maybe impossible to play again. I got that call around 2.30, quarter to 3. 7.30, I was on an airplane. 11.30, I took the charter off of the wall. 4 o'clock, I was back home. <laughs> and so word kind of got around that I wasn't going to tolerate that. And, and fortunately, nobody sued us as a result of that. And we were able to make amends with the young man's family, primarily because his mother was a saint. I say all this to say that we have got to be forever vigilant about hazing. Maybe you read some, some recent email. And our national president has said we have zero tolerance on hazing. One other thing, uh, social action or publicity, I'd like for you to consider. A few years ago, uh, the way Brother Jerome Halls and I got together, Eric's father, and we had a discussion about how much money we were spending on our orchid ball. Most of which, you know, today, a couple of people in here can testify, most of which I paid for every year. Right. And they were fabulous affairs. And we had them several years, and everybody looked forward to come. Eric was a young fellow and, and, and he came along with his parents. But Brother Oliver and I said, you know, we spent all of this money entertaining folk who eat, drink, and be merry and go home. Well, what do we do? So out of that conversation was born a nursing home business. And every year following our orchid ball, we would choose a nursing home and take little gifts to nursing home people. And it was so dramatic because there were people there who never had a visit. There were people there who never had the simple things like a comb, a brush, a toothpaste, or all of that sort of stuff. And it was, and people started looking forward to that Saturday before Mother's Day for that uh, ceremony. And it was such a heartwarming thing. And we'd get all kinds of stuff here. And we used the orchid ball. We started doing it ourselves. Then after a couple of years, we used the orchid ball and we put a little note in there, come and bring a gift, a gift for a nursing home. So all these hundreds of people who have been eating and drinking and dancing on that spree started bringing gifts. And we'd fill up one of these rooms back there with gifts. All I say to you, uh, consider it. Um, our general board will meet and I'll be going to Philadelphia for our general board meeting on March 1st. And while I'm on that, I do not want to be the only president from the state of Alabama and from Tau Sigma ever elected national president. We've got too much talent and too many individuals who can do too many things for us to do that. But you got to show up at the conclave. All of the good work that I've been hearing tonight that we do here goes for naught in terms of the hierarchy of the fraternity if you're not there. For two or three conclaves, because I always pay my son's dues, was the reason you didn't have to pay 
a conclave after his feet. Because uh, he became Charles Sigma Chapel. And that shouldn't be. We Carton Clay, Philadelphia, uh, in July of this year. It's going to be the next Carton Clay that we do all the things that we do, meetings, uh, uh, committees, all of the great work that we do. Carton Clay, Washington, D.C., in 2014, it's going to be a three or four day park. No meetings, no, 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 no committees, no, no, it's just going to be a 100th anniversary park. The conclave will be in Bertie. The party will be in Washington, D.C. And you don't want to miss that. How many of you think you're going to be here for the 200th anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you think so, I got news. <laughs> uh, Brother Johnson got news. <laughs> uh, you heard your 100, you know, the Delta, did you see them on yeah. the Today Show? Yeah. 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 They turn 100 this year, January this year, and they came in droves uh, to New York to celebrate their 100. And they had them on the Today Show being introduced by our fraternity brother. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, just think about what we can accomplish in 14. Everybody in here ought to want to go to the 100th anniversary of the fraternity. Yes, sir. The Lord willing, I'll go in a wheelchair or however I have to go if I'm still around. I feel that, like that like I did about Obama's inauguration in 09. I didn't feel like I needed to go this time. But I felt I had to go last time. I was cold, too much walking on these arthritic legs. But it was all worth it in 09. It ain't worth it this time. <laughs> uh, but if you can, brothers, plan to send some delegates to this kind of collection in July in Philadelphia. And for God's sake, don't miss the 100th anniversary. Next thing. We have a lot of fraternity brothers. There's they going, you're coming to the fraternity meeting. A lot of them ain't gonna even get out at night. But if you contact them, they'll pay their dues. Several of them. Uh, one time I collected Jerome Tucker's dues at the post office. Just happened to run into him. And he'll pay his dues. You got Arcel Pettis who'll pay their dues. You got Brad Horn who'll pay their dues. You got uh, several brothers who will pay their dues contact. Uh, brother, brother Dr. Ashford over there, I don't know if anybody's talked to him recently, uh, would probably pay his dues. So you build your treasure and your membership by having those brothers active in your chapter, whether they're here or not. And it has something to do with your vote at the common committee. You get a vote for every five now. So you want to have that number up by getting the brothers back. <coughs> Finally, and I don't, I don't want to waste a lot of your time, but let me say, as a chapter, you, I want to congratulate you. You are doing a good job, better than folks like me ever did. We may have had the dream or the vision and you have realized it and that's the way it ought to be. Uh, but you need to keep pushing. We had a goal of 100 active members one time. We never reached it, but we got real close. And uh, you had a lot of graduation since then, so you ought to be able to come up with 150. Anytime you put your mind and heart to. 
I always like that line from the Crescent. Uh, to serve the air and joy of pain and sorrow or in strife. We'll still proclaim in loud reply. My baby is the light. That's a story. No matter what disagreements you have with a brother, my baby is the light. No matter how much pain one brother has, my baby is the light. We, we are with those brothers in life, sickness, and death. You know, you can be a member of a church and you can leave the Baptist church and go to the Methodist church, leave the Methodist church and go to the Catholic church. You can change churches any time you want to. And when I say this, uh, in the presence of ladies, they don't like it, but it's the truth. You can change a wife. <laughs> but you don't have the option of change and pretend. So whether that is joy or pain, always remember, by basis of life. Yes, sir.